Bang, bang, bang. All right, let's talk about what thieves are shopping for for Christmas. We got Scott Cornell. He's a national practice lead for transportation crime and theft specialist at Travelers. Hey, Scott. Hey, guys. Good to see you again. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, it looks uh, bright and sunny where you're at. Uh, where are you sitting today? I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. It's uh, it's almost always bright and sunny out here. It's nice. And this is a great time of year. We're starting to get the great weather. You know, we get we get about eight months of great weather, four months of suffering. So <laughs> <It's not laughs> well, we, we hear it, Scott. Well, hey, you know what? Shippers don't want to suffer this season and uh, receivers don't want to shuff, suffer this season through cargo loss. And we talk about that a lot on the show. But I have I suspect that during the holiday seasons, these kind of activities start to ratchet up. Yeah, we really see, you know, it's exactly right. We really see a bit more targeting of specific items in the fourth quarter than we do other quarters. Not that we don't see targeting, but, you know, it's going to be the newly released things, the video game consoles, the tablets, the computers, the TVs and the phones. You know, they definitely attract more attention from the thieves in the fourth quarter. Uh, We also talked, you know, previously about how immediate notification of a theft is going to be key uh, for anything like that. Yeah, I would imagine that is. So we're moving right into the holiday season right now. I mean, we're right up against it, bumping against up against that wall. What can we expect moving forward in the rest of this 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 season? Higher than normal? What are you looking at? Typically, we see, you know, what we consider what we call a fourth quarter bump. Uh, We usually see uh, cargo start to move. Um, You know, anywhere from August through October to so everybody ramps up for Christmas, make sure they have enough stuff ready, enough stuff on the shelf. So as that Christmas cargo starts to move, we'll see some targeting of that. And, you know, we have to keep in mind, we're not the only ones out there shopping. The thieves are out there shopping, too. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the tricky part uh, that we're seeing this year is, you know, cargo theft's been pretty elevated really since the pandemic. It hasn't come down that much. So through 2022, the numbers have still been up pretty strong. So you might not, the bump that we usually see in the fourth quarter might not be as noticeable just because the numbers are already high. Uh, So I would say, you know, pay more attention to what's going to be targeted in the fourth quarter. Uh, You don't want to get lulled into a false sense of security Mm. just because we don't see a giant bump. Just keep in mind the numbers are already high, right? So uh, we think a lot of people know, you know, from the frequency in the past or have been bitten in the past that, you know, holiday shipping season is a hot time for cargo theft. And we hope that, you know, they'll, they'll keep that in mind as they start to secure their loads. So any, any understanding on what, I mean, you mentioned the consoles, you mentioned electronics, and we've talked about electronics before. Is that basically what's going to be on that Grinch's Christmas list that these are looking for this season? What should, what should shippers, who, what shippers should be perking up their ears that their goods might be stolen? Definitely. It's exactly what you said. It's the gaming consoles, it's the new phones, it's the new tablets, you know, things that aren't even on the shelves yet. Right. So the the thieves, you know, that golden rule always applies. The thieves are going to steal what they know they can sell. So they want to be the ones to have that new item before it's even on the shelf or get it out there. Right. So they're going to target those things. We see at this time of year, we'll actually see some shippers require that carriers use security escorts. Uh, to meet the shipments at the ports and make sure they get to their end, uh, you know, end destination. Uh, we see this in particular with uh, game consoles and uh, and phones. We don't see as many games themselves stolen as we did in the past because most of the games are downloadable at this point, right? So you don't see the, the truckloads of the actual games themselves. The game consoles are still heavily targeted. Um, <clears throat> and the thieves will usually not bother the loads that are escorted. And then we see ancillary things that are also taken during the holidays, liquor, turkeys, hands, Mm. fashion items, you know, whatever the hot toy of the year turns out to be, uh, which is, you know, you got to be able to predict that or kind of know what's coming on that. Yeah. So, Scott, do the thieves look for the, the latest, hottest trends? I mean, I get the electronics and stuff like that. Always popular. What are the most popular toys this year? Are we looking at uh, Cabbage Patch dolls or what? Yeah, I don't I actually have no idea and I don't need to because all my kids are grown. Right. But I do kind of need to know uh, just <laughs> so I know what to watch out for. But I think it's mostly going to be gaming consoles this year when it comes to toys. Uh, I haven't really heard of anything that's really jumping off the, uh, you know, off the page, so to speak, for anybody. Um, I, I can tell you about a story we had in the past, though. Years ago, we're talking late 90s. Uh, there was a certain really hot toy that happened to, that happened to be out that holiday. We knew it was going to get targeted. 
and a load of it got stolen. And, you know, the shipper had an end customer who basically said, hey, you know, we only have two thirds of our shelf stock. If we don't have this toy on our shelves, we may actually go out of business. We may not be able wow. to survive the holiday season. So we, we got the call right away. You know, we've talked about in the past, we have our own cargo theft recovery team. So we were able to scramble that team. We had a retired uh, law enforcement officer from local law enforcement on our team uh, in the LA area at that time. He was very well aware of the ring. We, we try and keep track of all the rings that operate in those areas. And he was able to work with local police and recover that load in time for the holidays uh, for that client. So it's it's really critical uh, to report early. We've talked about that. We talked about that, you know, the beginning of this show, but we've talked about it numerous times. We got that notification immediately. And if you are moving some of the hot toys, you are moving some of the hot electronics, you need to get that notification out quickly. And if you have resources like the ones we offer, they need to know about it as, as quickly as possible. Okay, so I already know I got a trailer full of Tickle Me Elmos this Christmas, and I, I you know, I, I don't want them to get stolen. What as what can me as a shipper do? The key word this year, and and really with every you know throughout the year, obviously, but but around this time of year, prevention is key. You do not want to be chasing a stolen load any time of year, but especially during the holiday season. During the holiday season, all the resources are going to be stretched really thin. You're going to have a really hard time getting somebody, even if you're hiring somebody in the private sector to go and do it, you're going to have a hard time getting people to prioritize your loss when there's more losses, when we're already high in cargo mm. theft numbers. And, and then you get a little bit higher in the fourth quarter and you're trying to stretch the same limited resources to do more. You don't want to be in recovery mode. So a lot of times, you know, we work with our clients that that same unit that does recovery for us will work with our clients to to work on prevention, how to secure loads. So if a client calls us and they're hauling some of the most popular things or some of the items that they think are going to be targeted, we'll ask them, you know, the, the questions, you know, that you and I have talked about in the past, you know, hard locking devices. Are you using them? What procedures do you have in place? Do you have good process in place? Like, you know, the red zone policy that we've talked about numerous times here, things like that is just one example. And we'll review what they're what they have planned and then we'll suggest some changes, maybe some additional members, maybe uh, measures, maybe some additional resources, things like that, and help make sure that they don't have the theft, that they can deliver the things that they're, they're being asked to deliver. Right, right. So, Scott, so you mentioned the red zone policy. Once again, remind our audience, what is that red zone policy? Yeah, it's just one example of a great policy to have in place. We know that cargo thieves do surveillance on the distribution centers. We know that they like to follow trucks out of the distribution centers. And when they do that, most of the time what they're hoping for is you're going to make that stop shortly after you've picked up your load. And as a driver, you're going to go get fuel, you maybe take your rest, use the showers, get dinner, whatever it is that you're going to do, which gives them time a short distance from that distribution center to steal your load while you're trying to do all the things to mm. prepare for the trip. And what we encourage our clients to do is have the drivers do all of that prior to picking up the load, you know, take their break, do all their person, you know, take care of all their personal needs, have their meal, get their road snacks, fuel up before they pick up the load. And then once they pick up that load, drive a good 200, 250 miles without stopping. Uh, and that usually will discourage the thieves because they're looking for that short trip, that short follow of the driver. Do we see exceptions? Do we see them, you know, follow for hundreds of miles to target loads? We do, but it's the exception, not the rule. Wow. Hey, Scott, uh, thank you. That's good advice. And if I become a driver, I'll, I'll especially keep that in mind when someone's tailing me. Yeah, absolutely. 200 miles. Get out of Dodge get first, out of Dodge. then get, then get Dodge. it done. They're, they're, nice. They can be a little bit lazy, right. so exploit that on them. Yeah. Uh, check out Traveler. Scott, thank you so much. Hold it down in Arizona, and uh, hopefully we see you before the new year. Thanks, guys. Have a great year or a great weekend. Sorry. Sure. Great week, not weekend. Thanks. Well, we'll have all of them. We'll, <laughs> we'll have it all. I'll take, we'll take all, all of them. Three. I'll yeah, take everyone. Enjoy it all. Enjoy it all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care, oh, brother. Thanks, Scott. <laughs>